claim what belongs to you declare right now God will confirm whatsoever you say he's confirming it right now he's bringing it to pass right now you are not returning the same way you came in here this morning I'm restored I'm restored I'm restored yes I'm restored yes I'm restored everything lost recovered thank you mighty father in Jesus wonderful name we are prayed every blessing of God is preceded by the Word of God every blessing of God is preceded by the Word of God Lord send me your word of restoration words are instruments of restoration send me your word of restoration this morning let it be direct let it be clear let it be strong somebody pray right now father send me your word of restoration this morning i believe your word let it come to me quickly let it come to me powerfully let it come to me direct send me your word of restoration this morning i receive the engrafted word into my soul the word of restoration i am fully restored this morning by your word <laughs> ah in the lady bagataya in the lady bakataya umblolore klandola shagala baba thank you mighty father in jesus wonderful name we are praying so shall it be as you receive the word of the lord right now i decree full restoration for you whatever is missing shall be fully restored to you whatever has been stolen shall be fully restored back to you you will return from here with full scale laughter this morning all your mockers will go into hiding from today in the name of Jesus so shall it be give God a big hand everybody and please take your seat welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turn around if you are glad that God brought you into this special service this morning our covenant day of restoration say with me thank you Jesus and just like the choir sang this morning I want you to help me prophesy to two three people this morning tell them you have been restored you have been restored you have been restored and respond to your neighbor yes I believe I'm restored yes I believe yes I believe thank you Jesus I can see you clapping for the Lord right now again The prophetic focus for this month is the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want and if you can let's echo it together with meaning the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want when he shepherds you lack and want disappears if you want an end to your want keep following him following jesus is the beginning of the end of man's need you will never lack any good thing in your life again our teaching series every sunday this caption understanding how god leads god leads by ways ways he shows us the way to go moses knew the ways of god and was never stranded once psalm 103 verse 7 he knew the ways of god and so he commanded the acts of god the acts of god are made manifest by following the ways of god you need guidance more than you need prayer for miracle most people are spending their energy praying for miracle 
when they should spend their energy praying for guidance if your prayer for guidance is answered then you may never need to pray any prayer for miracle in your life i pray from today god will guide you yeah. if you can say louder amen. amen i pray that from today the god of this commission will guide you yeah. isaiah 59 verse 8 the way of peace they know not you need to follow god to enjoy the peace of god but understanding comes via learning what you don't know you don't know and what you don't learn you will never know and what you don't know you suffer for learning learning is a process for understanding understanding means enlightenment the more you learn the better enlightened you become keep learning to keep getting enlightened in all of your ways keep learning and so what you've been doing since this month began is to learn how god leads learning brings familiarization the more you learn the more familiar you become on a subject matter the more you learn about a subject the more familiar and skillful you become in handling that area of learning but how do you assess divine guidance how do you assess divine guidance number one you must create and practice a serene and quiet environment quietness we live in a very noisy world noise everywhere noise of music noise of people and you know they said empty barrel makes the loudest noise that's why we have empty people all across the globe today noise making the opposite of noise is voice but for you to assess the voice you need to create an environment a quiet environment only those who hear his voice becomes a voice Jesus had the voice of God and he became a voice. God's servant to Edepo had the voice of God in a quiet place. Now, by the grace of God, he has become a voice. In 1981, first of May, the Lord told him, seek a quiet place. I want to speak to you. And that's how he encountered the 18 year 18 hour vision when the lord told him in summary the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil he heard the voice of god in a quiet environment don't get too busy not to hear his voice elijah the prophet was a man of quietness now if you study the bible very well you discover that most prophets live in quiet places wilderness desert mountain top they go to hear the voice of god because god speaks to people in quiet environment the voice of god is so still is so small but loud in the ear of those who take time to listen to him first Kings chapter 19 verses 11 to 12 and god said to elijah go forth and stand upon the mount before the lord and behold the lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains 
and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. These are noisy things. Noisy, noise, noise. To distract attention. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. May you hear that voice. I say, may you hear that voice. Psalm 4, verse 4. We are admonished to stand in awe and say not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Because his voice comes in a still, small voice. John, the beloved, the revelator of revelation, was on the land of Patmos. To hear the voice of God, he separated himself on that highland. First John chapter one verses nine and ten. He was on that island to hear the word of the Lord. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Most people who are guided by God have learned to practice quietness 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 genesis chapter 3 verse 8 after god created man they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day in the cool of the day we live in a very busy world but you have to create time a quiet time before the Lord. Some people say, well, maybe this man doesn't know how busy I am. I'm moving from one place to another. I'm always busy every day. Listen to me. If you are busy at daytime, you can create time in the night season. In the night season. You can choose to sleep early and wake up in the night when there is quietness. You don't have any excuse. Or wake up early in the morning like jesus would do jesus was a man of the night i used to say those who sleep all night will fail all day don't sleep all night stay awake choose the time one hour two hours stay on before the lord as a tradition i don't sleep earlier than 2 a.m or 2 30 a few times 3 a.m. I'm awake before the Lord, hearing what he has to say. Take advantage of the night. Psalm 16, verse 7. Hear what the word of the Lord said there. I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night season. In the night season. Practice quietness. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night, 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 night. Psalm 19 verses 1 and 2. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord, the firmament you had for his handy walk. Day unto day uttered speech, night unto night sheweth knowledge. So, if you are busy at daytime, you can create time in the night. You can create time in the night. When others are busy sleeping, you stand before God in quietness. Why? God speaks to us in a still, small voice. Receive grace for that. Receive grace for that. Spiritual signals are stronger in quiet moments. Spiritual signals are stronger in quiet moments. All of us, or many of us here, have telephone set. If you don't have signals where you stand, 
you will never be connected. So you start looking for where the signal are. The signal of the Holy Spirit is stronger in quiet, still moments. Say loud, amen. amen. Number two way to assess divine guidance is through the ministry of teaching priests. Who are teachers? Teachers are agents of enlightenment. They help us to get enlightened over certain things that the Lord wants to communicate to us. Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 3 recognizes that there are teaching priests. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8, there are teaching priests who help to make God's word distinct, distinct, and they give sense, they give meaning and cause people to understand there is a story of a young king Uzziah is his name second chronicles chapter 26 verse 5 and he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding of visions of god and as long as he saw the lord under zechariah god made him to prosper now why do you come to church you come to church to be enlightened over things that are not clear to you in the first service in the teaching bishop aramo said you are not safe in any church where you don't have a teacher and you should all realize that please Church attendance is not for jamboree. It's not a place where people just prophesy over your life, make you sing, make you dance, make you jump, and you cannot pick anything when you are going back home. I've told myself several times, I will count myself a failure if after any service, you are still wondering, I don't know what to do. That's why we teach. We teach you to become matured in connecting to the Spirit of God. I will prefer you listen to my teaching than take my prayer. Because if you take my prayer today, you will come back again for it tomorrow. But if you understand what I'm teaching you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's why I don't have much regard for people who come to me all the time. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. No listen to me listen to me sit down sit down with the world let me teach you through the teaching you may never need a prayer that's why there are many people seated here today whom i have never had an handshake with whom i've never laid hands on yet things are happening in their lives i believe you are one of them here pray for me pray for me syndrome keeps people under bondage many pastors like that anyway they like people to line up and say pray for me then in fact i prefer to hear your testimony of what you did through the teaching than what i prayed for you it's better it shows to me you are maturing it shows to me you are not babies so the teachers of the world are there to enlighten you do you know that God himself communicates to us through teaching? Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you. God is a teacher. And teach you in the way that you should go. And after you listen to the teaching, then I will guide you with my eyes. Those who don't have value for teaching can never be guided. Isaiah 40. 8 verse 17 i am the lord your redeemer and after redeeming you the next thing i'm committed to is to teach you the way to profit and because we cannot see god physically often he appointed teachers whom we can see so they can communicate to us deep enlightenment from the word of god isaiah chapter 30 verses 20 and 21 sorry please 20 and 21 
and though the lord give you the bread of adversity that means no matter how you have suffered and the water of affliction yet shall not your teachers be removed into a corner anymore look a generation that lack teachers is a doomed generation doomed generation that's why god had to bring teaching priests to bring them out of their calamity yes shall not your teacher be removed from the, into a corner anymore but your eyes shall see your teachers and where do you meet your teacher in the school system in the classroom in the same way where do you meet your spiritual teachers in the church so every time you are coming to church don't just say i'm going to be prayed for i'm going to learn jesus said come and learn of me not come and receive prayer from me come and learn from me prayer may be wasted but learning is never wasted come and learn from me jesus said back to isaiah chapter 30 verse 20 i will not remove your teachers from you but your ear shall hear a word behind you through the teaching of the teachers saying this is a way working in it when you turn to the right and when you turn so teachers are our spiritual guides they are the under shepherd of the chief shepherd jesus is the chief shepherd first peter chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 we standing before you we receive from him through the holy spirit to teach you what he is saying to us micah chapter 6 verse 9 look at the mystery there talking about the word of god and the road the lord's voice cried in the city and the man of wisdom shall see your name hear ye the rod the rod now the rod is the word and who had appointed it and you know the shepherd the shepherd the sheep with the rod the word of god the rod the rod so every time you are hearing the teaching you are receiving the rod of the shepherd guiding you moving you to where you should go so don't take your pastors your teachers for granted don't say i know him no he is standing on the behalf of your shepherd the lord is my shepherd he teaches me with the rod the rod he will guide me with the rod and with the staff so the word of god is the rod with which we are guiding people who listen to us say i receive it don't joke with being in church that is where that is the spiritual classroom where you and your teachers meet together number three how do you assess divine guidance it is through maintaining a lifestyle of joy and rejoicing in communication system we have what they call tuning and fine tuning fine tuning you see when you are rejoicing and you are praising god you are fine tuning your spirit to connect with the spirit of god you are fine tuning the finer the tune the clearer the voice on your radio or on your television or on your telephone the finer the finer singing rejoicing fine tunes your spirit <laughs> you can never assess the voice of god if you don't learn to rejoice and be glad isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 and with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation and you know the word of God is light unto my path. It's lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. 
Psalm, one, Psalm 16 verse 11 Psalm 16 verse 11 that will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy fullness of joy so when you are full of joy you will know the path of life Psalm 89 verse 15 blessed is the people that know the joyful sound you must be familiar with joyfulness joyfulness stay away from sorrow it will block your access to hearing God those who bow their head in sorrow can never hear God those who get excited every day they wake up in the morning jumping singing and leaping are the ones who can get access to the voice of God say loud amen, amen. Acts chapter 13 verse 2 when the teachers and the prophets gather together as they minister to the Lord singing rejoicing the Holy Ghost spoke separate unto me banners and bands and soul for the work whereunto I have called them Isaiah chapter 30 verses 29 to 30 and you shall have a song so me I have a song as in the night when the holy solemnity is kept and you will sing with gladness of heart forget about your losses get excited <laughs> sing with joy make melody in your heart with gladness of heart as one when one went with a pipe to come into the mountain of the lord to the mighty one of israel and what will happen verse 31 then the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Your song must go up for his voice to come down. Your voice must go up for his voice to come down. So your singing is the primer of the voice of God. You are priming the voice of God. You're getting God stirred up to speak. Some people say, oh, I don't hear God speak. Does he hear you sing? If he doesn't hear you sing, you will never hear his voice. Every day, God speaks to me. Either by audible voice or the voice of scriptures. Every day. He speaks every day. He gives light every day. You will never be defeated anymore. Say loud, Amen. Create a quiet environment. October 18th, 1983, I was in a meeting and the Lord said, get to a quiet place. Get to a quiet place. And that's when God revealed to me my stewardship mandate under God's servant Bishop Oedipo. From Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 12. He said to me, if you are faithful in that which is another man's, I will give you your own. Quiet. If you want to assess great mysteries about your life, seek a quiet place. Get a quiet place. Get a quiet place. Are you confused over any matter? Go before the Lord. Lord, what do I do, Lord? Then a clear voice coming to you. Say, Lord, Amen. What are the biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit? How do I know I'm being led by the Spirit? Number one, when you are truly led by the Spirit, you will be enjoying multiplied supernatural insight. That is, there will be volume of scriptures that will come to load your mind, to strengthen you, to give you assurance that you are in the will of God. Massive multiplied supernatural insight he will be fertilizing his guidance to you with light with insight with more revelation in line what is what he sent you to do what does that mean if you are not truly led by god you'll be revelation dry you'll be insight dry You'll be confused about what next to do. When you are guided, he continues to give you light to guide you, to lead you unstoppable. Psalm 119 verse 105 again, that word is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. 
Psalm 32 verse 8, it will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go. Isaiah 48 verse 17, all of that put together. Number two, biblical proof of being led by the Spirit is liberty. Free spirit. You enjoy free spirit, free mind, free atmosphere. Psalm 51 verse 12. Restore to me with the joy of salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, that is when the spirit of the Lord guides you, you will enjoy liberty. You don't feel hooked or gagged. You don't feel bound. Paul suffered that. He was bound in the spirit. Yet, he said, I am going ahead. Hear these people of God. Anytime the Spirit of God is cautioning you, you'll be feeling a boundary, a bound not to go. Constraints, restrictions. When you feel that, wait for a while and let God clear the way for you. Wait for a while. Even as preachers, there are places we don't go. Because they won't listen to us there. The Lord told Paul, he said, don't go there because they will not receive your testimony. They won't receive your testimony. He wanted to go to Jerusalem. He loved to meet with philosophers. He loved to argue with people and debate the scriptures. The Lord told him, don't go there because they will not listen to your testimony. May you not go to a wrong place. Acts chapter 22 verse 18 and saw him saying unto me make haste get me quickly out of this place get out for they will not receive your testimony concerning me you may be good in cooking find out where they will appreciate the cooking you may be a good tailor find out where they will appreciate the tailoring you may be a very fine preacher go only to the place where god has prepared the people to hear you a time came god's servant traveled to japan man the reception was very wonderful and on the way returning he started drafting and drafting too many so many plans how to get back to japan and who will go there and a day came the lord said to him even though there is a need in Japan, you are not the one I'm sending there. You are not the one I'm sending there. You may have what it takes, but are you going to the right place as the Lord guided you? May you not carry good things to a wrong place. May you not carry the grace of God upon your life to a wrong place now listen to this if you have good yam and you want to plant it and then you took it to my duguri you have already destroyed the yam because the place is not good for yam but take it to taraba take it to benue the yam will be as long as my leg amen <laughs> you may have what it takes but don't take it to a wrong place lift up your hand everybody i decree that from today you will never never go to a wrong place again <laughs> now we are here on our covenant day of restoration if you can lift up your hand again everything the devil has stolen from you shall be fully restored back to you <laughs> the devil is a thief it's a thief. He has stolen somebody's ovary here. <laughs> Get ready. You are getting it back now. <laughs> he has killed somebody's children. In pregnancy or life at birth, I decree that in the next one year, you are getting back your miracle children. <laughs> he comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. Maybe you have, your job has been taken from you for upward of 10 years or even more we have a testimony of somebody here they took his job from him in the process his retirement came 
but God still restored back the job. They paid him for all the years in service, paid him all his gratuity, paid him everything. This testimony was shared here by the hand of God, by the mighty hand of God. Watch it. It doesn't matter how far the thief has come. Today, he will be caught. As I'm speaking right now, he's getting caught. And everything he has stolen from you is restored back to you. Now, please get to know that not all losses is as a result of the devil stealing the material things. But it can also be a result of ignorance. That's why you must be enlightened in the word of God. Ignorance. My people are robbed, are destroyed as a result of their ignorance, lack of knowledge. How can you know what belongs to you if you don't learn? So one of the process of restoration is learning the word of God. Is that so? Ah, I see. I didn't know this thing belongs to me. Like many of us seated here, before you came to this church, you are so being cheated by the devil. And as soon as you began to hear the word of God, ah, you mean I can prosper? You mean I can live in good health? You mean I can succeed? Ah, you mean my family can live in peace and harmony? I got it! And because Satan knows you are already knowing it, he withdraws by himself. You see, when you acquire knowledge, Satan doesn't wait for you to bind him. He knows his time is up. Just like when you switch on light in a dark place, darkness withdraws because he knows that his time has come. You need to learn. You need to learn. You need to learn. Arrival of knowledge is departure of robbery. Arrival of knowledge is the exit, the termination of ignorance, robbery, pains, hardship. Some people ask, why do you pray with such simplicity? And I tell him, it's because I know what to say. I know what to say. Why do you always smile? And I tell them, because I'm in charge. Knowledge puts you in charge. I don't shake for any devil. No. They listen to me. When I speak, they listen to me. Because I know my position. And they know. From today, all robberies of what belongs to you is terminated. Please note that by redemption, every child of God is called to glory and honor. Romans chapter 8, verses 29 to 30. Second Peter chapter 1 and 3. It is told unto you glory and honor. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Jesus took the hold of the enemy and receive for you and I power which the devil stole from us he made man powerless in the garden he stole power from Adam he stole riches from him he stole wisdom from him supernatural wisdom became human wisdom he stole from him wisdom get back on that passage he stole from you know Adam strength agility good health a man who was to live forever began to die things in him began to die he stole from him honor a man who was clothed by the glory of god now began to look for leaves to cover himself he stole from him glory the man lost his color he stole from him the blessing of adam the blessing of the garden from the garden he ended in the wilderness jesus already brought those things back to us say with me i receive power, I receive power. wisdom Glory, Glory. Honor. honor, riches, riches. and blessing. Amen. It is yours today. Yeah. Every loss in life has to do with those sevenfold blessing of redemption. You are taking it back today. Yeah. However, you must understand that our God is a God of times and season and understanding the times is great asset in the adventure of life first Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 sons of Issachar 
were in control of their brethren because they understood the times and the season. They understood the time. You see, everything with God goes with time and with season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, to every purpose on heart here, there is a season. And verse 11, it makes all things beautiful in its time. So we need to know what times are we in. For the world, it may be time of calamity. But for the church, it's time of glory and restoration. I know you are receiving the same better amen. For instance, revival season in which we are now is a time of the manifest presence of God that results in salvation of souls and bringing about restoration of glory of believers. Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 17 to 20 is a time of restoration. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Anywhere God is, something is about to happen. He will save he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. He will, he will celebrate you. And I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. You see, gathering. So winning. So winning. One of the ways we know we are in revival time is the souls that we are winning. Gathering them into the assembly. That's why our season of in gathering is here. You must not stop bringing people to church everywhere you go to he will gather them to the solemn assembly who are of thee there are people that god has ordained for this church and he's sending you to go and bring them he will gather them to whom the reproach of it was a burden they were in reproach you need to gather them behold at that time when they gather i will undo all that afflict thee and i will save those who are stagnated and I will gather them who are driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame and at that time I will bring you again even that time that I gather you and I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the heart when I turn back my your captivity before your eyes see the Lord say loud amen, amen. so revival time soul winning time is restoration time it's a season of the move of the spirit which is ordained to restore glory to God's people the spirit of the Lord God is upon me Isaiah cried in chapter 61 he has anointed me to preach the gospel and all of that and all of that and the ultimate of that spirit of God is in verse 7 that is the peak of the evidence God sends down his spirit to terminate shame for your shame you shall have double somebody say amen this morning what will you have this morning and for your confusion they shall rejoice in your portion therefore in their land they shall possess the double you are possessing minimum double this morning what is the minimum you are possessing this morning i want to hear you very well let the holy spirit hear you right now let heaven hear you to release it to you now let the devil be scared away from you right now say it if you will share your testimony before the day runs out, say it again. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, if you check every incidence of restoration, you see the condition. The condition is very simple. Return. Turn to God and he will restore to you. Turn to God with your heart and he will restore to you your life give God your heart and it will make you to enjoy your life return look at the prodigal son for instance his blessings were restored when he returned you have to return for God to restore he said I will arise and go back to my father's house and in verse 20 he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way afar off, off you know off his father saw him and had compassion on him and the father ran and fell on his neck your father is looking for how to bless you 
but you have to return you have to return if you are wayward you have to return see a lot of people say i don't know why god has forgotten me and abandoned me you are rather the one who abandoned god he's always there the prodigal son abandoned the father he went away and one day he said i am going back and the father met him god does not abandon people it's people who abandon god if you are backsliding get back if you have been born again and you turned you became a drunkard an addicted smoker get back to god he's been waiting for you looking for you he will not reject you he will not turn you away return 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 joel chapter 2 from verse 12 and 13 12 and 13 return therefore also now said the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart with fasting with weeping with mourning become sober rend your heart not your garment don't be an hypocrite and turn unto the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repented of evil turn to him verse 15 all the way to 20 emphasizing the same thing when you return to him in prayer blow the trumpet sanctify it fast call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation let them including little children that are sucking the breast let the bridegroom go out of his chamber let the priest stand before the altar of god let them cry before the lord then the lord will be jealous over his people then the lord will say i will give them corn i will give them wine i will give them everything they need god has no problem giving you things if you first give him your heart give him your heart and he will give you the things that have been lost from you get back to running after god and he will make the things you have lost to run after you then he went further to say in verse 25 i will restore to you the years the years the years i will restore to you my people shall never be ashamed verse 26 i will restore to you to a point that you eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god who are death wondrously with you and my people shall not be ashamed and you shall know i'm the midst of you and my people shall not be ashamed the peak of restoration is glory today your glory and color is being restored to you yeah. say louder amen yeah. get back to god and he will get back your things for you get back to god and he will get back his, your things for you the people you are battling with are stronger than you only god can conquer them they are mighty men putting you under they are mighty men blocking your way that won't let you ride but run to the almighty he will subdue the mighty man. Say loud, amen. Run to the Almighty and He will subdue the mighty man who are putting you under them. Today, all your enemies shall be humiliated. Let me hear you loud, amen. Everyone who has stolen from you, they will release your blessing to you. Finally, therefore, commitment to kingdom advancement endeavors is what entitles you to supernatural restoration. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be restored back to you. You will not need to struggle for them. They will be restored back to you. Your health will be restored. He said, I will restore back to you your health. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. I will restore you back to your joy you will no longer have broken soul. Why are thou cast down on my soul? Why are thou discarded within me? Hope thou in God. He will restore your soul. Psalm 23, verse 2, or verse 3. He will restore your soul. He will restore the years that have been taken from you. All the years you have lost shall be fully restored back to you today. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I will restore to you years. He will restore to you everything that is dead like he restored lazarus back to the sisters everything that is called dead in your life shall be fully restored back to you they shall be fully restored back to you but 
you have to make a demand you have to make a demand you'll be declaring i receive back my health i receive back my job i receive back my position i receive back my relationship i receive back my finances i receive back my building i receive back my job my business stolen from me i receive them back and you shall have whatsoever you say and as you are doing that i'll be joining you here with a prophetic voice because prophets are agents of enforcement i like to repeat that again prophets are agents of enforcement they are agents of enforcement check all the prophets in scriptures they are never gentle people they enforce things they compel things to happen moses was used by god to compel pharaoh to release them he said i know he won't let you go but i will stretch forth my hands through moses i will break his backbone i will humiliate him i will break his backbone listen to this today any devil fighting you is fighting this commission and no one ever fought this commission and went free all their noses shall be rubbed on the floor today everyone standing on your way will smell pepper today look if the devil knew you'll be coming here today he will have done all he can to stop you but it is too late you are here right now upon mount zion the place of deliverance the place of holiness the place where you will possess your possession upon mount zion the church shall be deliverance one of the such churches is goshen here and there shall be holiness and the house of jacob shall possess their possessions that the devil has stolen from them that's why you must not miss church church is a place where to report all who have stolen from you they told you what will you become tell them i'm going to my father's house i'm going back to my father's house where i will restore what belongs to me i'm going to my father's house i'm going to his servants who are there to minister did you hear the testimony this morning somebody had cs 41 years ago that has caused great affliction to her she came to the bible school they prayed for her 41 years of affliction gone because there was you know prophetic voices there that loosed her to let her go i will be speaking over your life today everything the devil has stolen from you must be restored back to you there is an anointing on this altar today that will compel all that belongs to you to return back to you your health shall be restored your finances shall be restored your job and business shall be restored your building and land shall be restored your relationship shall be restored your marriage shall be restored everything the devil has stolen from you what will happen today i'm not sure heaven is hearing you say it very loud now somebody Give God a big hand out there. Glory to God. Now, first thing first, return to God. Return to God. The blessing didn't follow the prodigal son. He had to come back home to take the blessing. Return to God. There are people here this morning, God is speaking to you. God is telling you, return back home. God is not your enemy. God is your friend. He has been looking for you, even in your waywardness, in your drunkenness, he's been looking for you. You know how you did last night? You got so drunk, yet God still had mercy on you. He tapped you this morning. He brought you here this morning. You didn't have plan to be here. He brought you. You know how far you are from God. Why? Why? Why will you be far away from your lover? Somebody here this morning is saying, I want to return back home. I want to return from fornication. I want to return from adultery. I want to return from 419. I want to return from drug addiction. I want to return. I want to return. On the behalf of Jesus, I am calling you now to return home. Your father is waiting for you with smile on his face. Everyone that wants to be saved, you want to be born again, you want to be restored back to the faith from your waywardness, 
Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. It's time for you to be saved. God bless you. I know you will. I know you will not delay. Everyone that wants to be restored back from backsliding, stand to your feet. And all of you who are standing up, why don't you stop coming to the altar here? If you came with anything to church, Bible, bag, telephone, wallet, don't leave anything behind, including children, and start coming. Come with eagerness, if you can, and you are young, run down here. Run. Please help me clear the eyes. Yeah, I can see some young people trying to run. If you are running, run down. Run down quickly. Run down quickly. Run down quickly. Run down quickly. Help me clap for them as they run down. God bless you. God bless you. Don't delay. Don't waste time. Don't ask questions. The prodigal son didn't ask any question. He arose and left for his father's house. Rise up. Your father is waiting for you. Run to him. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will change your clothes. He will give you everything for dignity and honor. He will give you everything that he has. Church, I thought you are still clapping for our wonderful brothers and sisters who are returning home. They are returning home. They are returning home. They are returning home. They are returning home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are people who are still seated, watching, waiting. You are hearing the voice telling to you that when you get back home, you'll pray your prayer. You don't need to go out. It's a device. Satan catches people from the back, not from the front, from the back. He will tell you, don't worry. He will be holding you back. You need to free yourself this morning. There are not less than 15 more people, as I'm talking right now, who need to be here. Your mind is already in front here. I don't know what's holding you down there. Others have left you behind. Don't remain behind. Don't remain behind. Yes, yes. They are standing up already. I know you will surely come. I know your mind is here. They are already coming. Church, get excited. Give God more praise. They are already coming. God bless you. God bless you. They are already coming. Somebody is saying, oh, I will not go. You must come. Because today is your day. You must come. Because today is your day. You must come. I decree that that devil holding you down release you now. <laughs> Man, I see them standing up. They are coming already. They are still coming. They are still coming. Satan, you are a liar. You are a deceiver. You are caught today. You can't stop these ones from running into the kingdom of God. Now, all of you who are here and those of you who will be joining them, lift up your right hand and pray this prayer with me. Make it the loudest you can. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Make it louder, please. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me today. I know I'm a sinner. I want to be free right now from the power of sin and of the devil and from the things of the world. Give me my freedom today. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me on the third day he rose again for my justification. Now I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior because I do I am now born again I am now a child of God thank you for saving me amen Heavenly Father we receive these souls into your kingdom and we know the devil has no more power over them in Jesus wonderful name all of you my wonderful friends brothers and sisters say loud amen, amen. will you please allow our church officials to attend to you if you came from the middle, those of you by my right, you go with them this way. And all the others, please come this way. God bless you. Please start going. Church, clap your hand for the Lord as they go. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Everyone in the congregation, help me ask your neighbor, are you still gathering souls into the kingdom? What did your neighbor say? Tell him, oh, I'll do something this week make sure you follow up all of your new converts bring them to church on wednesday and on sunday our midweek service is growing by the day with diverse testimonies of the act of god in the lives of people 6 p.m we have free transportation all the way from uh Kefi area and from Mas maraba area bring you safely take you back home to your various homes the same thing every sunday 
they bring people as many as want to come to church no one has problem of transportation again in this church everybody that wants to come so get your friends your acquaintances all of your loved ones and bring them safely if you can you pay their way if you cannot lead them to the you know loading bay where they carry people to church and they will bring them freely and take them back to their various home say with me i will be a part of in gathering of souls please be reminded also the winter satellite fellowship holds every saturday 5 p.m and what more we are still opening more cell centers